What is going on guys? Today's video is going to be just a touch different than normal fishing content or unboxings. It's going to have to do with the boat. So before I get into what these things actually are, this is kind of like Father's Day present. Because my dad and I were at Cabela's and we were just looking around at the point in time when we came across these guys. There's switches for your boat batteries and my dad saw the price on them and he was just blown away because the cheaper one, which would be this one right here, was $25 at Cabela's and then the more expensive one, which is right here, was $55. So you're looking at like $80 just for switches. Well, I got both these guys on Amazon for like 30 bucks total from actual decent sellers with good ratings. So I figured I might as well give them a try. Again, before I explain what those guys are, I'm going to explain the battery and wiring situation here in the back because it'll help you guys understand that a lot better. So on our boat, we have two deep cycle batteries. These guys are solely for the trolling motor up in the front of the boat. And then in that shadow back there, you guys probably can't see it, but we have a cranking battery and that guy's sole purpose is just for the motor right there. So both these switches have slightly different purposes, but I'm going to explain the one thing that they both have in common, and that's kind of why my dad really wanted these guys in the first place. So when we get home, we unplug our batteries entirely, trolling motor batteries and the cranking battery, because, see we got our up and down buttons here on the big motor. Like, I don't know, say a piece of hail comes and hits this thing, smashes it in place or something, and it's still hooked up to the battery. Well, this guy is going to either sit there and keep trying to push down or keep trying to push up. It's probably gonna dam damage something eventually, and not only that, but it's going to drain the battery, and depending on how long that battery is dead before someone would notice, that thing might be dead dead for good, and then you'd have to just buy an entirely new battery. Same thing with the trolling motor up front. Something could cause that thing to turn on and then it might damage something up there or it could drain the battery and completely kill it. All right, now I'm going to explain what both these switches do right here. This one's a little bit more complicated so I'll explain that in a little bit. But right now I'm going to explain this switch and the one and only feature that this guy has. But it also has the same exact function on the other switch. So if we look around the actual little dial right here, we can see all of this is red, and then we have a green section. And if we take a look right there, that says off, and then green is on. So this thing is basically like a light switch. You leave absolutely everything connected and hooked up, and all you gotta do is flip the switch to either give power to something or turn it off. So originally, when we would get home, we would open up this compartment, unscrew the power from the battery over there and then just like you know dangle it over the side so that nothing can take that battery's power you know like the engine example i gave you guys but then the thing is next time we go fishing we just got to hook it up again then we come home we got to unhook it so this guy pretty much eliminates all that nonsense all you literally gotta do just flip a switch every single time you want it to have power or not to have power. All right, so we got the basic on off switch out of the way. Now you guys know what that thing does. Now with this guy right here, this is for our trolling motor batteries. And remember, we have two of them. So this guy's a little bit different. So now if we look on this one, the majority of the dial is green. And then we just have a little red section, which is the off section. If we look right here, we can see two, one and two, and then just one. So the way this thing works is you hook up each battery to their own individual stud. So like say battery one, then battery two, and then you hook up whatever it's powering right there. So then we have a pointed to off and like say we hit the water and then I want to draw power from the first battery for the trolling motor i'm going to flip it to one and then say that battery dies so i'm going to flip it to off i'm going to flip it to two right there 
so that I can start drawing power from the second battery. So this again eliminates the need entirely of ever having to essentially swap the trolling motor wires right here from the first battery to the second battery. But then again on this guy it's pretty much also like the other switch where it has an on and off section. So whatever you put it to either the one or the two or the one and two depending on how much power you want to draw from batteries. This whole entire green section is the on section. And then you get home from fishing and all you do is flip it to off and then no power can be drawn from your trolling motor batteries anymore. So location wise you can put them just about anywhere it depends on how much wiring and all that stuff you want to do. But we're just going to install ours right here right next to the batteries. And it's also a good thing I asked my dad where he wanted me to put them because originally I was going to put them way up there right next to the steering wheel. But as you can see, when we have the cover on the boat, it's not really a very easily accessible area, especially when we're home right here. And this is a very easy area to get to. So I'm just going to install them right here. You guys can hear that's pretty hollow. The reason why is because we have our compartment right here. Obviously, we would not be able to do that if the lie wall is right there. The live walls are right here though. So I'm going to install them over here. It's not really going to be that big of a deal if a bolt goes through into that compartment. Because being that this is also so thin, so something like a self-tapping screw probably will not hold it in place. So using a nut and bolt would probably be the way to go. First things first, I'm going to take both the trolling motor batteries out. And being I got these out of the boat, just going to take a wire brush, clean up some of these terminals a little bit, because I mean you can see that's corroded right there. This guy's corroded. This one actually looks pretty decent, so does that one, but you know, might as well just do it while I got it out. I'm going to show you guys something on these things. So originally when you mount it, it's going to look like this. And you're probably thinking, well, the wires have to come through the backside to be able to get to the terminals. Right? All you do is take your little door out and you got plenty of room for the wires to come in through the side. So that's what we're going to do is take those little doors out. So now we got to figure out exactly where we want to mount these guys. So I'm thinking I'm going to have the trolling motor one way over here like this and probably have the cranking one just a little bit over. I'm going to have to mount it a little bit higher like that, keep it out of the way. So I'm going to, I don't exactly know how I'm going to mark the holes yet where I want to drill these guys because this piece is so deep right here. Oh, I'm going to go get a drill. Okay, got all eight holes drilled. You guys can see them right there. So this drill bit is the exact hole size on the switches right here. But for some reason, I was having difficulty pushing the actual screw through, so I'm gonna use a step drill bit just to widen those holes a little bit. And next thing I did was vacuum out all of our little shavings, because you know, we're not a bunch of animals, so we're going to make it all nice and neat. Now the next thing, these are the terminals for the trolling motor. What the heck kind of crimp job is that? I mean, it obviously is crimped, otherwise it would have fallen off by now. But 100% I'm going to chop this off. I'm just going to chop off the positive right here. And actually put the terminals on the right way and put some heat shrink over them. These guys right here are my connectors. 100% want to make sure that the wire actually fits inside the hole before I start chopping everything off. And as we can see, it's clearly not as big as the other hole, but the wires should be able to fit inside of it. So, 
and chop it off. And usually with thicker wires like this, you gotta go a chunk at a time. Voila. Now we can see all of this wire, nice fresh copper. And I'm also gonna do the same to the positive wire. I mean, we can literally see all the wires just poking out right here and they're all corroded too. So we're gonna rewire that. I'm pretty sure this is a fuse. It says 30A, so 30 amp. But this is definitely not any type of fuse I've ever seen. But if you do have a fuse, this is the exact spot that it should be at. So I'm gonna take these off, clean it up a little. Guess what, it's always a 10 millimeter, always. And now to get enough wire out so we can put a lug on it. I'm gonna use a little razor blade right here. Just cut through the sleeving. Usually when you're cutting through this, all of a sudden it's it's like super, super easy and then you'll feel like a grittiness and that's the wire, so that's when you know how to stop. There we go, and I probably could have cut even more sheathing off. Oh yeah, I could have cut like almost twice the amount off. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I got the positive cut and the negative cut. And if we hold the lug up to them, you can see I have just about the right amount of wire showing. It's better to have a little extra wire sticking out than not enough. Because when you think about it, you're crimping onto the wires, you're not crimping onto the sleeving. So we slide that on and that's just about how it goes. Now to attach it to the actual wire, I have a hammer crimper right here. You can use a hydraulic crimper, but this is a lot cheaper. So all you pretty much do, you got your wire inside of here. Stick your lug in there and it's spring loaded so it holds it in place. And all you do is whack the top right here with a hammer. Also I have it on a piece of wood so I'm not just whacking this thing right on top of the door because when you think about it you're putting all that force on this little area versus you put on a piece of wood it's taking up that whole entire larger area and ta-da nice strong crimp i mean you can use solder but it is not recommended for large large wires like this because once it starts heating up from getting use the solder can melt and then your lug just comes right off the wire so always crimp bigger wires like these so next one up negative and voila negative on there nice and tight next up i gonna put some heat shrink right here so no water or anything or moisture can get into that little gap right there and slowly corrode our wires away now this is a heat gun it's not a blow dryer So some fun stuff happened and I had to run to the store and get a new relay. So got the trolling motor wire here with the new relay, new fuse. And this looks really funny because I had to add that extra nut in there because I didn't have anything small enough, you know, washer wise. So my dad also picked up two packs of these guys and the purpose of these is to be able to clamp them onto the battery post and then run this piece 
to our little switch. So we got one for one battery and another for the second battery. And because this black one is the wrong color, we're gonna make it the right color so we don't get confused or anything down the road. Not right now I'm talking, I mean like months down the road. So I'm just gonna tape this whole thing up. Okay, now we just went from the black wire to red wire. I'm also going to add some heat shrink on these guys because even though they are crimped and you know obviously they're strong, water can still get into that little seam right there. Not saying that it's going to, but it can. Condensation too. Start corroding the wires. All right, so now that we got both of our battery cables coming from the batteries going to the switch, all rigged up already. We got our new relay on our trolling motor. We're all ready to add all of these to the switch. And we're going to add them all before we screw it down because it's gonna be impossible to get back here with it up against the side of the boat. So if we look at our lovely diagram here, we can see both of our boat batteries on both of the positives we can see them going to it's kind of it's kind of hard to see but it's it's in a triangle pattern and both of those ones are right close next to each other and then if we also look right here we see a little curved black line that's this little curved piece so in other words we have to put both the batteries on these terminals and we're putting our trolling motor on this one. Okay, that is plenty tight right there. Definitely not going anywhere. And it's not going to matter where I put either of these wires. So, just going to hook them up. But I'm going to have one coming out each side. Just so it's not all cluttered and messy looking. Okay, that guy ain't going anywhere. Now we are on to our last one. And with this guy, I'm going to pretty much just have him coming straight out the side. Right, all of these are nice and in place. Now we can actually attach this to the boat. All right, so I'm technically done with the trolling motor switch right here. Off, one, two, it's nice and secure. Definitely a lot more wires here than there was before but it's also going to be a lot cleaner and nicer Alright, so I got both the positives hooked up, and then I got the trolling motor negative on this battery's negative terminal. But, I don't know why my dad just doesn't have a wire connecting these two negatives. 
I don't know, I'm gonna have to ask him about that. He's not home right now. But as of right now, still gonna have to come back here and swap over the negative to this one. Gonna get on the trolling motor, test this guy out. Turn the switch to one. I think I'm kinda stupid sometimes, so turn the switch on the side on. But I forgot to turn the little dial here actually to one of the speeds. So if I pull that, you guys can see that one has power. Switch it to number two. And to get the second battery to work that does not have any wire running to the ground, I'm gonna have to make up a wire for that. All I did was use the alligator clip my dad had back there. I guess that's how he's been doing it all these years. And I just clipped that to the other battery for the negative and it works. So I'm just gonna leave that on there for now and then tighten that up. But I, we really need to get a new wire for this thing because if anything, this is the worst wire out of them all. And I got it pointed straight down now for the off position, so we're gonna test that. And nothing's changed up here. And as we can see, it does not have power. And all of our settings are on. Now they're off, so exactly what we wanted to happen worked. So remember, we are done with the trolling motor batteries. Now we're on to the cranking battery. Now these two wires were just on the negative, and then all of these wires right here were all on the positive. Now we can see these two big wires right here are our negative and positive. And just looking at these guys, they are pretty big. Um, definitely bigger than the wiring that I have. I have some extra six gauge, but it's oxygen free copper. So it can handle a lot more power than copper clad aluminum. But then again, if these things are still bigger than that, wire wise, then I'm probably gonna have to get new wire but I can see the little strands of wire inside of that crimp right there and through the heat shrink. And it doesn't really look like there should be too many wires in there. Might just have a super thick sleeving. But if I can make them work in this guy right here, so I can, you know, chop this connector off, put it in here, and then run it all the way over to the switch, then I should be good. If not, then I will just have to order some more wire. But the first thing I think I'm going to do is redo all these crimps and things and put heat shrink on it because to me it just looks too messy. It gets the job done, but it looks messy. Oopsies, I didn't see the lock wash on there. So, so, so. So I made this a lot cleaner than what it was before. Got all of our positive connections right here. Then we got our two negatives and then our positive for our motor. Looks so much better like this. And now it is time for the reason that we're actually here. So we're gonna cut this guy, not gonna know how thick it is, what it looks like until we cut onto it. that is pretty thick I don't know if my wire that I have is that thick well I think I'm probably just gonna have to stop right about here because I'm gonna get, need to get some bigger wire not sure exactly what size this is but this guy right here I used it for a wiring project on my truck and this is pure six gauge welding cable so I'm guessing this is either one or two gauge or zero not quite sure. So just gonna buy some bigger wire to connect to this guy and do this project right because we don't wanna use a smaller wire otherwise we could 
overpower the wire and start a fire and we don't want that to happen so I got my digital caliper here I want to know how much copper there is here so I can order some new stuff definitely not buying wire this big in the store it's gonna cost way too much so we're looking at around eight millimeters for the wire thickness so I actually thought about this and my dad pointed it out but if I were to leave all of this stuff connected to the battery and wired up exactly as it is and if I were to just connect the boat motor wire to the starter to our little switch then this thing is the only thing that's going to get power cut off to it whereas all this other junk could still be drawing power from who knows whatever it's connected to unless I ran all of this to that little switch and that's a lot of wires so we're not going to do that instead we're just going to take our two ground wires right here and run those to the switch because in a system if you don't have either the positive or the negative hooked up nothing's going to work so if we run our negatives to the switch it's going to act the same way as if we ran our positives to it but first things first we're going to patch up our positive wire that we cut off put a new wow that thing's almost big enough just to fit the whole entire insulation and everything in there going to put a new lug on the end of this put some red heat shrink on it so we actually know it's the positive cable about that far down perfect all right got the positive hooked back up so technically this one and all the other positives in this big old chunk right here are literally good to go back on the battery so now we are just going to cut the negatives apart so I'm gonna chop, chop this off so I remember what is what kind of sucks because I just put that end down there It'll look all nice and pretty oh, gonna have to dig that out of the bottom of the boat I also hate it when people don't use adhesive line shrink wrap otherwise it's literally meaningless and here is also the new wire that I have to run from the battery over to our switch over there. This stuff is super heavy duty. You can see exactly what I bought right there. Why not? This stuff is absolutely massive. It's actually bigger than the wires that are already on here. You can see the size difference. And this wire, I liked it because it came with some shrink wrap and also these battery lugs. Now these battery lugs fit absolutely perfect on these. I mean, it's not crimped or anything and it's holding on there. So being that this wire is slightly smaller, I had to absolutely really whack it down and you can see I pretty much dang near concaved that thing to get a good crimp on it should hold up right there but before I connect the new wire to our old negative wire I'm going to get the rest of the connections all done so I don't have to sit there and monkey with it up here so all I have to do is so all I have to do is connect this wire to the old wire up here and then the rest of the system is already in place because this ain't really a good workbench and there ain't any room to do it down in here and then this wire is only this long so I'm pretty much forced to do it up here and it's kind of a pain so okay this little bugger stuck crimped quite a lot with it and I've never had to get stuck come on 
Come on. There we go. Holy smokes. See, that's pretty much what this guy does. And it's okay if you have a tiny little bit of wire showing. That's what our heat shrink is for. Alright, now to connect the wire, we just crimp to the wire from the motor. We have a butt connector. There we go. Now that guy is halfway down in there. So I'm going to crimp this guy. Oh well, this thing is definitely not going anywhere. So, now it is time to get our other wire up here and crimp that down. I'm not going to have it on camera though because I need my... My mom's the only one home right now. And I can't hold this thing up here and hold the lug on it. And make sure this thing doesn't bounce all over at the same time. So, I'm not going to film it because the camera's just going to be in the way. So, I'm going to put this shrink wrap over it. Got shrink wrap for days, so don't matter to me if I waste a little bit or put on more than what I actually need. But we're making sure that these wires do not go anywhere. Right now, officially, our boat battery wire is fully done. So, being that I got this guy cooling off right here, we're going to get this little negative wire hooked up. And this is definitely a pure copper wire. But because I don't have any pure copper wire of the smaller gauge, this is either 10 or 12, it's going to hook up some copper clad aluminum. There's definitely a lot more wires here, but copper clad aluminum can't really hold as high of an amperage. So uh, this is 8 gauge, and like I said, this is either at least 10 or 12. You can definitely see a side by side on how the one in my right hand is a lot bigger. So we're going to make do with this. And I'm also going to connect them with this guy right here. This is a solder connector. I like using these things on smaller wires. Alright, so now we got our two negative wires ran over here. Both heat shrinked, all good to go. And they're going to both connect to the switch. But remember, we have two posts, so now we need another wire that runs all the way back to the battery from the actual switch and the kit I bought came with five feet of black and five feet of red so we're using this remainder five feet of red to go back to the battery from the switch and see that's what the hammer crimper is supposed to look like nice and neat then I also made a spare little cable to connect both the trolling motor batteries and this one turned out nice and neat too now that both of these are done, I'm going to wrap them with black electrical tape so there's never any question or doubt as to whether they are positive or negative wires. Now these things are wrapped to perfection. And as far as I know, it's not really going to matter which post I hook these guys up to because it's literally just an on-off switch. It's not like it's positive and negative mixed together. Let's see? Oh, come on. I gotta drill that out. That's pretty solid. Okay, yep, that definitely ain't going anywhere now. Now I can connect this guy. I also had to drill the hole out on this thing too. 
So then we're gonna have this guy coming in this way. Where's all my stuff? Got so much junk up here. Okay, where's the... Okay, here's the lock washer. Oh, where the heck did the nut go? There we go. Bada bing, bada boom. It's all wired up. Now I'm going to install this switch, and that's going to require moving all my junk right here to get inside this compartment. So now I got this guy all plugged into place. Just gonna secure these wires a little bit more and I also had to run them on top of these batteries because um, there is no room on this side or that side it's literally touching the edge of the boat I think the cleanest looking spot for this wire to lay would probably be right up underneath here. And to do that I'm going to get a zip tie and I'm just going to, I mean you guys can see that little tiny hole right there. And there's another one right there, I might be able to get a zip tie in there, if not I'll just enlarge that hole with a drill bit a tiny bit. That'll fit. Tighten that down quite yet. Well, uh, nice and clean looking. Well, I'm also going to put something extra on here an actual battery post clamp whatever you want to call it but the issue I'm having with this is we got the nuts on the, this side so that's the side you got to tighten down but when I stick it down here like this you can see it lays nice and flat but then the nuts are right here and literally right there is the side of the boat it would work perfect if I could turn this upside down but because that hole is angled it's not going to even go onto the battery post, so pretty much forced to lay it like this. And because of this wing nut, I can't have this crooked or anything. And I got to use a stupid uh, wrench to tighten it. I absolutely hate wrenches. The negative all hooked up, all good to go. Now we're on to the positive. Wow, my god, I am finally done. And now to prove that our switch works. Got our motor right here, got our up and down. You can see these buttons do absolutely nothing right now. Switch this guy to the on position. Voila. So, both switches are operational and it turned out exactly how it was supposed to go. And let's not forget about our little negative wire connection we made here so that we can get rid of this rusty atrocious looking thing. Ow!
All right, now I am officially done. I'll get in there and vacuum up all the other junk and all this stuff another day. So we got our trolling motor disconnect switch right there and our motor disconnect. So we got our first battery running into our switch on the right. Our second battery right here, it's running into the switch on the left. And then the wire coming out of the bottom goes straight to the trolling motor. And then our battery over here, we have our two negative wires, the blue wire and this black wire right here running into our switch. And then because they're physically connected to the switch and touching each other, we only need to run one back. And that's the one right here that I got wrapped in the electrical tape. So then if we take a look, we got our one single wire coming back right here hooked up to our negative on this battery and then all of our positive connections we got our main motor right here hooked up right there and all these other little silly wires hooked up to this wing nut and if you ask me this turned out a lot cleaner than what it was before and it's actually done the right way I almost forgot to mention our big old negative wire right here connecting both the trolling motor batteries. And, well, that was pretty much this whole project. Just made life a lot more simple in the future, a lot quicker. All we gotta do is flip that button to on when we want to use the big motor, get done fishing, come home. All we gotta do is switch it off. And with the trolling motor switch here, it's pretty much the same concept. It's in the off position right now. We hit the lake, turn it to the on position for battery number one. Then after this guy gets depleted, switch it back to the off position and then go to number two. And then we're just using juice out of the second battery. And after we drain the second battery or we go home, just flip it down to the off position and we don't gotta disconnect absolutely anything. And I also don't know if I mentioned this earlier in the video at any point in time, you know, in all of the recording time that I've spent filming this project. I'm sure we'll get some people who question why don't we just hook up both batteries to the same wire to go into that switch. And then we can drain both of them equally throughout the day. And the reason why is because first off our trolling motor is only 12 volt, so these 24, 24 volts total would fry it. But then also you can wire them in series, parallel, all that, whatever. And then you can get a constant 12 volt source. And then we could power a trolling motor that way, you know, based off of the two batteries. But the issue with that is then we are using both batteries at the same time. And what we like being able to do is when we have this to the, to the one position, it's just draining one battery. And then like say that lasts six hours. Then all of a sudden when this battery dies and we got to switch it to this guy, then we know we pretty much got around another six hours to fish. So that just makes life a little bit easier having them separate because if you're fishing all day long and you got the trolling motor on max power and it's draining both of these at the same time, if you got it on max power and it's super windy out, you might only get four hours worth of battery out of it before you realize, oh, hey, I didn't take my foot off the trolling motor all day versus say you had only one hooked up and then like two hours in, you're like, oh, wow, I guess I really haven't stopped running the trolling motor at all. I'm going to have to slow it down a little bit so I can keep fishing throughout the rest of the day or find a calm spot on the lake. So that's why we like separating the two. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed today's video, if you guys think I actually got some decent wiring skills, because I did make that monster over there, so it's not like I'm a rookie or anything at this. <laughs> but if you guys think this project turned out good, or if I helped you guys install your own battery switches, make sure to stay tuned, and I'll see you next time.